So I want to ask a few questions. Mommy, please, how did you come about the initiative of wanting to spend your birthday not just with people, a whole lot of people and partying and all that? Yes, you you did quite well by by going with the rules and regulations of not um, um, doing the old eventful birthday thing and all. And you wanted it to be remarkable by discussing with people on how to keep being healthy at home and not just sleeping not just staying at home and then people who are very very versatile in this um healthy lifestyle to give us good ideas on how to go why did you come about this initiative in the spirit of brotherhood and sisterhood love is very important like we're family we are here for us all and being here for us all is being sensitive to the seasons and times the seasons and times that we are here now needs us to take charge reach out to one another speak that language of love world love as against COVID-19 pandemic it should be love pandemic we all need one another now and i thought we can't call thousands of people around and party and all that no need to endanger but how do i reach out and maximize because it's about educating sensitizing letting people understand that COVID-19 is real and um, we can't afford to lose any more lives. It's about time we bend the curse to where it gets to zero. No pain, no gain. A little bit of sacrifice, denial of some things we used to enjoy. I mean, like today, I miss the touch and feel, the love and all that of what it could have been. But I have hope that tomorrow will be greater and better. That it's not going to be over for us all. But key, our attitude. Our attitude will determine the altitude and the success we are able to make at this the only language i know to speak is love do all that it takes to keep life stay safe stay healthy we're still here on the topic bridging the economic security food security gap so glad to have you back we're now talking on economy Obviously, um, lots of things are going to change. For me, I hope it's for the better. After um, this major disruption, lessons learned, being prepared will matter so much. Equipping ourselves for the road ahead, the way to go. Thank you. We're having Mr. Elder joining us. Hello? Uh, yeah, good evening. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, sure. Good to have you, sir. The network, huh? Okay. Uh, I can hear you clearly. Awesome. So... I can hear you, it's just that I'm not seeing your face too well. Oh, okay. Maybe the uh, camera. Um, yeah, yeah, awesome, yeah, awesome. awesome. Like, yes, so yes. Guess, uh, no, this is fine. Uh, yeah, we're good, we're good. We're good, sir. Oh, okay. 
and thank you for the opportunity. Your answer. Yes. Okay. So, uh, good evening, everyone. And, uh, happy birthday to you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. I wish you long life and uh, prosperity. Thank you, sir. And, uh, of course, and I thank you. Hmm. You want to focus fully on our, your job. Don't do any other thing. Unfortunately, with that organization, many of them might not be able to keep you if they themselves are not making money. So the truth now is, the period you would have developed yourself, even if it's part-time, you know, doing something, learning one or two things, uh, you know, probably making side-side hustle kind of body. All of those times would have been wasted, and you find yourself in this quagmire where you lose your job, or more importantly, you don't even have a skill. Hmm. So, one of the major lessons I think the coronavirus has taught me, which of course also looks into the future, is the fact that in today's time, in today's world, very, very, very important. It's circumstance. You must have a side skill. You must yes. have a, some people call it side also. But second address is the side skill. Mm. There must be something you are skilled at that see. Not just a skill that coronavirus can affect or yeah. impact on, but a skill that is universal. So for some people it could be web design, for some other folks, it could be proposal design, for some other people. The skill must not be like oh, a physical skill or a tangible skill. It could be something intangible. Your, your skill could be that oh, you know about agriculture. Mm. You know you can get tomatoes, pepper. For example, no matter what happened with the pandemic, people still had to eat. Yes. No matter what happened. Now, on the other side of it, what are those key areas, those key sectors that you know, no matter what happened with the pandemic, these sectors are not affected. So if you identify those sectors, this period where even the schools will be on lockdown. No people that will enter your house. As part of their side also. Of course, if you are going to offer home lessons for 10, 15, 5 students, you need to ensure that you are doing that in a safe environment. But the key is student or children cannot just be at home doing nothing. Hmm. Somebody still has to at least teach you. And some persons came up with that idea that okay, within my area, at least as I'm sitting at home doing nothing, or as I've lost my job. Can I begin to teach these children? Hmm. Even if it's 10 of them and the parents pay, even if it's 100 or 200 every week, depending on the environment you live in, that determines how much you can at least charge. Knowing fully well that the parents can afford your bills. Now, yes. these parents will be glad if they have someone that can at least take the stress off them from morning to afternoon. Because we all know how children can be when they are at home. I live in a compound where we have some kids. And you know, ever since the pandemic, it's one noise of fights said so or the other you know if you are not hearing the noise uh, in the compound you're probably hearing the noise from your house their own mm. apartment where you know, the, you know, you. okay so, imagine if someone who will get over his service to engage the minds of the student and put the parents to be because they know that oh, this was actually the distress of thinking about these guys and the parents have to go to work mm. they have to do their own normal also so there are a lot of opportunities that of course that the pandemic itself uh, yes will have created problems but at the same time security and then the third leg was security in itself so you have health you have food security and the security because at the end of the day everything being done on the health front still stands to um, to be swayed if food security was not properly handled and then that would have cascaded to a sense of insecurity within Lagos then the next thing was if we announce a lockdown how would people move about? How would the daily income earner be able to afford to feed himself or herself if they are unable to go out of the house? And in response to that, on the 27th of March, Mr. Governor flagged off the COVID-19 Emergency Food Response Initiative of Lagos State, where the 
idea was, okay, let's see how we can even feed 200,000 households in the first leg, and then subsequently we'll see how this pans out, depending on how long the pandemic was for, or the lockdown was for. And that's what we had done during the lockdown period. Now, post-lockdown, which is what we are in now, what we are trying to do now, according to the strategy that we have laid out, the roadmap that we have for the next five years, is to see how we can up our security, food security levels from the current 18-20% to 40-50% within the next five years. And one of the pillars of the Mr. Babajidi Olushola Songolu um, agenda, the themes agenda, is making Lagos a 21st century economy. That's the fourth pillar. And under this fourth pillar is where agriculture features. And under this is where we want the ease of doing business in agriculture to be at the forefront. A lot of these um, avenues are being exploited. And the best way to do that exploitation properly is to assess each value chain. So in that value chain, when you assess it, there are loopholes in each and every of that link. And within that, you can begin to look at where the opportunities lie in closing the gap which is where technology can feature. You know what, we have this available, but we need people to invest their money in this. We'll make this as easy and as seamless for you as possible. And then, I believe that we have success stories all around. So it's just a function of, if you think of, uh, agriculture is for you, then we are open to also partner with you on it to make your journey come true. So. Thank you. Thank you very much for your time. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. We are presenting the Borosu Personal Top Year Award to our honorary princess, Afola Shadi Olaba Miji Oba. Due to our bureau, she has been playing not only in the world, but as far as Lagos State is concerned. We have been seeing all our activities day in, day out. Even in all the social media. And we have no choice to celebrate such a personality that is using that to elevate the name of our national leader. And today we are thanking God. It's also our birthday. And she is using it to celebrate everybody and using it also to talk about the pandemic, that it is real, that we should take caution and we should pray to Almighty God to make sure that this thing is off the land as soon as possible. Today, we are wishing you happy birthday and also congratulations for this great award. Woo! Okay. Woo!